Welcome to Supernatural Thrills, where mysteries and supernatural chills await. Close your eyes and dive into eerie tales. Subscribe and join us in the unknown. Deep within the heart of the majestic mountains of the Faroe Islands, far from the bustle of civilization, lay a hidden valley known as Björn de Lure. This remote place was shrouded in mystery and fog, with its only access being a winding path that meandered through dense forests and wound around rushing rivers. In this valley dwelled Bergrisi, a colossal mountain being whose massive footsteps cast giant shadows over the valley's cliffs and meadows. Bergrisi was tall as a skyscraper, and his eyes were as deep as chasms. His appearance was intimidating, and his voice sounded like thunder when he roared across the valley. People from the nearby villages warned each other to steer clear of Björndalur and Bergrisi. They had heard stories of how he punished those who dared to venture into his realm. Even the most daring mountain climbers had turned back when faced with Bergrisi and his thunderous wrath. But a young and fearless man named Leif had heard enough of these tales. He felt a compulsion to challenge the unknown and understand the secrets of Björndalur. Leif was born in a small fishing village by the sea, but he had always had an unusually strong bond with the mountains and had yearned to explore Björndalur since his childhood. On a clear morning, Leif decided to embark on his daring expedition to Björndalur. He donned sturdy attire, packed his backpack, and set off. People from the village tried to convince him to stay, but Leif was determined to meet Bergrisi and see what the valley had to offer. Days passed as Leif fought his way through treacherous trails and steep cliffs. He ascended higher and higher, drawing closer to the mystic fog of Björndalur. Here the valley began to unveil its secrets as Leif ventured deeper into its untouched beauty. Björndalur turned out to be more magical than menacing. Colors became more vibrant and the air filled with the scent of wildflowers. Wildlife emerged from their hiding places to greet Leif, and birds sang a welcoming chorus as if they knew that a brave soul had come to explore their valley. As Leif continued his journey through the valley, the fog thickened and he felt a deep chill around him. Suddenly, he became aware of a trembling earthquake and heard a thunderous roar. Bergrisi was near, but something unexpected happened. Bergrisi emerged from the fog and his eyes, once filled with anger, now radiated curiosity. His thunderous voice softened and he greeted Leif with respect. You are brave to come here, Bergrisi roared, but this time his tone was different. No human has dared to venture into Björndalur and meet me. Leif decided to show respect to the mighty being. He spoke of his longing for adventure and understanding and his deep reverence for the mountains. Bergrisi listened attentively and began to realize that Leif had not come to conquer or harm the valley. He understood that Leif possessed a wisdom and a respect for nature that few people had. Instead of punishing Leif, Bergrisi chose to share his wisdom and secrets with him. He taught Leif about the valley's hidden treasures and the magical forces that existed between the mountains and rivers. Leif stayed in Björndalur for several weeks, learning from Bergrisi and becoming a part of the valley's enchanting world. He discovered how the fog could reveal hidden paths and how the rivers sang songs of ancient heroes. When Leif finally decided to return to his village by the sea, Bergrisi bid him farewell with a blessing. Leif returned with a newfound understanding of the mountains and had a deep respect for the hidden valley of the Faroe Islands. His story became known in the village as a tale of bravery, wisdom, and the incredible encounter with Bergrisi and Björndalur. The story of Leif and Bergrisi was told and passed down from generation to generation in the Faroe Islands as a reminder that even the most intimidating beings can become one's teachers and guides when approached with respect and humility. Bergrisi and Björndalur remained an integral part of the island's rich mythology and history, and young Leif's adventure became a legendary tale of a remarkable expedition into the unknown. Prepare for the next tale, if you dare. It was a cold and foggy evening in Herning when five friends decided to embark on an exciting road trip to a remote forest where frightening stories had circulated for generations. The three boys, Mikkel, Jonas, and Anders, along with the girls, Sophie and Emma, filled their car with snacks, drinks, and expectations for an evening filled with adventure. The route led them down a dark country road where the fog enveloped the surroundings, creating an eerie atmosphere. 
Soon they reached the forest, which was to be the site of their evening adventure. The forest was dense and dark, and the ancient trees seemed to hide secrets from a distant past. As they entered the forest, their car began to behave strangely. The engine growled and the car's lights flickered before it suddenly stalled in the middle of the woods. The friends exchanged worried glances and tried to restart the car, but to no avail. It was as if the forest itself had taken control of their destiny. While they discussed what to do next, they suddenly heard faint voices like whispers in the wind. They turned toward the forest and saw an eerie, illuminated figure approaching. It was a woman wearing an old, worn bridal gown. Her face was pale and covered in dirt, and her eyes glowed with anger. It was the ghost of a British woman named Beatrice, who had lost her life along with her husband in a terrible accident many years ago in the same forest. Her shattered soul was trapped in the woods, seeking revenge against those who had caused her misfortune. She began whispering threatening words to the terrified friends and sent terrifying images into their minds. Fear gripped them and panic spread. They knew they could not escape Beatrice's wrath and they had only one chance to leave the forest alive. With trembling hands, they decided to utter the name of Beatrice's deceased husband, William, as a plea for help as they had heard that he could protect them from her anger. They shouted his name, William, with all the strength they could muster. Suddenly, Beatrice stopped and began to wail, as if the pain of her loss overshadowed her anger. Her figure began to fade and her glowing eyes grew weaker. In that moment, the friends felt a sense of safety enveloping them, as if William, from the other side, was protecting them from harm. Beatrice withdrew and her ghostly figure slowly disappeared into the darkness of the forest. It took a moment for the friends to realize they were safe. They returned to the car and attempted to start it again. It roared to life and they could finally leave the haunted forest behind. They drove back to Herning in silence, deeply affected by the eerie experience. They had escaped Beatrice's wrath, but the terrifying night would haunt them for the rest of their lives. They had learned the hard way that some places should remain undisturbed, and their curiosity had almost cost them their lives. But they had also learned that love and protection could transcend the boundaries between life and death to save them in their hour of need. Prepare for the next tale, if you dare. It was a cool late summer evening and a group of young friends from Aalborg had decided to go on a camping trip by the secluded lake on the outskirts of the city. They had heard about the lake from some locals who claimed it was the perfect place to relax and have fun. They packed their backpacks with tents, food and beverages and set off. When they reached the lake, they were greeted by an idyllic view. The moon reflected in the calm water and the trees along the shore stood close and mysterious. The young friends set up camp by the water's edge, lit a campfire and began to party and enjoy themselves. The evening passed quickly and they sang songs around the fire, laughed and cherished each other's company. They were unaware of the hidden danger lurking in the deep dark waters of the lake. As midnight approached, they noticed that some of their friends had disappeared. Panic began to spread among the remaining friends, and they frantically called their names and searched for them in the dimly lit forest area around the camp. But there was no response and no trace. Suddenly, they heard a frightening, hypnotic music floating over the surface of the lake. It sounded like a violin being played deep underwater. Fear gripped them, and they realized that something was terribly wrong. They looked around, but all they could see was the lake's quiet surface and the dark trees. One of them, Pia, decided to walk to the edge of the lake to investigate where the music was coming from. Her friends warned her, but she was almost in a trance, drawn by the mysterious melody. She stood by the water's edge and listened. Her friends called out to her, but her gaze was fixed on the water's surface. Suddenly, something invisible but with a force pulled Pia towards it. She tried to scream, but no sound came out, and she disappeared beneath the surface as if she had never existed. The screams of the remaining boys and girls prompted neighbors nearby to call the police, who quickly arrived at the scene. They searched the area around the lake, but Pia and the others had vanished without a trace. The day after, the lake was dredged in a desperate attempt to find the missing young people but the only traces they found were the remnants of their campfire and a violin floating on the surface of the dark water. Years passed, but Pia and the others were never found. 
Those who survived the fateful night at the lake on the outskirts of Alborg carried the scar of the terrifying event for the rest of their lives. They now knew that the lake was home to the Nuken, a malevolent spirit that had taken their friends and left them in a world of fear and mystery. Since that night, no one has ventured too close to the enchanting yet perilous lake. The story of the young people and the Nuken lives on as a warning of the inexplicable forces lurking in the dark waters on the outskirts of Alborg. A lengthened conclusion. The passing years did little to ease the survivors' trauma. They were plowed by nightmares and an unshakable sense of guilt for not being able to save their friends. From the clutches of the Nukin, Pia's haunting last moments, her ease fixed on the dark waiters as she vanished, remained etched in their memories. As time went by, the survivors grew older, and some moved away from Alborg. Yet, they were forever bound by their shared experience. They held secret gatherings on the anniversary of that fateful night, lighting candles in memory of the lost souls and making offerings to appease the vengeful Nukin. Rumors and legends about the haunted lake persisted, and some adventurous souls attempted to uncover the truth behind the tales. Yet they all returned with unsettling stories of eerie music and whispers that seemed to emanate from the depths of the lake. The Nukin remained a force to be reckoned with, guarding its secrets and exacting a heavy toll from those who dared to approach. The local authorities eventually deemed the lake too dangerous and closed it off to the public. A high fence surrounded the once beloved camping spot and warning signs were posted, cautioning all to stay away. The lake, once a place of beauty and relaxation, became a sinister and forbidden place, shrouded in mystery and fear. The survivors, now much older, continued to visit the lake from time to time, leaving flowers and tokens of remembrance. They hoped that somehow their lost friends had found peace in the afterlife. The story of the Nukin and the ill-fated camping trip lived on in local folklore, a chilling reminder of the enigmatic and perilous forces that could lurk in even the most picturesque of places. The haunting melodies of the violin, the moon's reflection on the dark waters, and the memory of Paya's disappearance served as a somber and timeless cautionary tale for all who heard it. Thank you for joining us on Supernatural Thrills. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe. Goodbye.